because we're in Isaiah 30th chapter and the ninth verse. This is our people. Remember they want teachers with itching ears to speak to them the things that will appease them and not the truth. The law, statute, commandments of the Most High, they don't want that. Isaiah 39, that this is rebellious people, lying children. They're lying a minute. Children that will not hear what? The law of the Most High. Because you're taught you're not under the law. So you believe that you ain't got to follow the Most High. you giving the Most High the middle finger. All of y'all know what that means. That's what you're doing. If you children that will not hear the law of the Most High will say to the seers, see not, don't be looking at us. And to the prophets, prophets not on us the right things, speaking on us smooth things, prophesy deceits, tell us lies. That's why the Most High got something for you pastors. I just went over that. He gonna get you for lying to the people. What they say, get you out of the way, to get away from me. Turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. So who you think is before you if you causing the Holy One of Israel to cease from before you? Who you want to be before you? Since you, you say, hey, prophesy deceits. Look, I know this, Revelations 12 and 9. I know who to see the whole world. So this who you want? This who you got before you? Revelation 12 and 9. And the great dragon is cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. This who you asked to be before you instead of the most high and the most high was shot, which deceiveth the whole world. So what you want to hear? You hear what they're saying? They're saying verse 10 of Isaiah the 30th chapter, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not, us, not unto us right things, speaking of us smooth things, prophesy deceits. So you rolling with the devil. You rolling with Satan, you rolling with the serpent, the beast, Esau, I mean, tells you, they went astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Psalms 58 and three. So this is who you want, the power. That's why I look. Y'all think, y'all think the Bible is real. He let you know, man, whether you want to accept it or not. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. But if our gospel be hid, if what I'm saying, if what you're hearing in the word of the Most High, if it's hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You in darkness, you in ignorance, not knowing. You can't comprehend this. Listen, in whom the power of this world Remember, the devil's job is to what? Deceive the whole world. And whom the power of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. Least the light of the glorious gospel of a Mashiach Yahweh Shai who did not sin, did not break the law, statute, commandments of the Most High, and never ordained no one to sin. Who is the image of the Most High, the Son of the Most High, should shine unto them. Why they can't see Him? They can't see Him. Going back to second Timothy, fourth chapter. Verse 2, it said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. According to thus say the most high's word, according to understanding this Bible and bring it forth what the word says. And some people, I guess, sometimes you got to open this Bible to bring it to them because people act like all that I'm bringing forth once the book is closed, like you don't know nothing. Like I don't know nothing. So sometimes I guess it's going to come down to the time where you got to deal with the most high. His word, point blank. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears, as I just showed you. 
and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. You know? Like I see people on certain topics that I brought up, ping, ping, they leave. They, they, they don't want to hear that. So you're going to be held accountable because the angels are writing it down. Oh, you, you, I brought you here to hear this and you left. You better be knowing it. You better be getting all this. Because, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Hear that? Has Joe. Gonna be turned unto fables. A lot of you, that's what you're doing. Fairy tales. Y'all look like the Bible that's fairy tales. Some of you. Because you don't believe in as you should. Sad, but it's real. First Thessalonians 3. First Thessalonians third chapter. And let's look at verse 1 to 5. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone and sent to Maltheus, our brother and minister of the Most High, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Mashiach to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith in believing in the Most High, that no man should be moved by these afflictions. You know? That no man should be moved by these afflictions. So it, it don't sound like to me that them operating and bringing forth this truth to our people that it was so loving. He said that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourself know that we are appointed there unto. So all you that's afflicted to think, oh, I'm not supposed to be a smooth selling. He said that no man should be moved by these afflictions. A lot of y'all ain't been afflicted enough, enough to even fear the most high. That no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourself know that we are appointed there unto. For verily, for truly, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation. Even as it came to pass. And ye know. For this cause. When I could no longer forbear. I sent to know your faith. Lest by some means. The tempter. The devil. Satan. Have tempted you. And our labor be in vain. You don't allow Satan to come in. Into your ear. Into your spirit. To have you. Fall upon. Ecclesiastes 3.24. But many are deceived by their own vain opinion and an evil suspicion overthrown their judgment. You allow the devil to come in, Satan to come in, the tempter to come in, to make you make the wrong judgment to harm yourself and be brought into more affliction. It's serious. Because that grace and mercy is being lifted up off of us right now. Well, we got to do what we got to do. First Timothy, the first chapter. First Timothy, the first chapter. Let's go to verse 7. Understand, understand this. Let it be in you. First Timothy 1 and 7. Say, desiring to be teachers. Some desire to be teachers of the law. Understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good. The Most High's law is good. If a man use it lawfully, if you use it lawfully, it's good. It's holy. It's pure. Because it comes from the Most High's who wrote it with the, his own finger. The work of the Most High. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. The law is not made for those that are doing what the law says we're supposed to do. That's a righteous man. But the law is made for the lawless and disobedient, for the unrighteous and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, men with men, 
for men stealers, those that steal men and put them in captivity, slavery, and bondage, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. See? So the law was made for those purposes. But once you are operating and understand them, all laws and civil laws and dietary laws and ceremonial laws that we've got to follow right now, then you're not under the law. That's what it says, you're not under the law. You're not under the, those laws when you're doing with That's like, perfect example. You know how to ride a bicycle. So nobody got to teach you how to ride a bicycle again, right? You know how to do it. You know not to eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, dietary law. You know, everything they eat, boo-boo, you're not supposed to put it in your body. Because most I said, hey, we will make our bone in you. So if your spirit is in us, and you putting it, you putting all that boo-boo inside of you, feeding him boo-boo, and you expect that to be the spirit of the most high in you, and you eat, putting all that stuff inside you, eating you are what you eat, but y'all boo-boo eaters, you know, full of crap. <laughs> well, that's a word, you know what I mean? Straight up. That's why he say you gotta look at what you do. Once you know, and you pay attention, so I ain't gotta keep telling you to read Leviticus 11th chapter over and over and over again to you. Do what? You ain't got it yet? That's when you look at the dietary law. I'm just looking at that law. You know, I went over moral law, civil law, and ceremonial laws. You should know when the next holy day coming up. You should know. If you don't, it's, and if you miss it, that's on you. Because you don't care. That's being written in the book for you. That's what I say. Who really cares? Bet you know when Esau's next day is. Hella day is. But what's the next day for us as the Israelites? All Israelites should know. Regardless of wherever your calendar says, you should know the next day that you will have a holy convocation or a new moon service or whatever, new moon feast or whatever. You should know that. That should be in your spirit to know so you won't be sinning, doing what's wrong. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And verse 32. I'll read verse 31. I love this. <laughs> it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. You know, I say that all the time. See, some of you don't fear until he gets you into his hand. But it's a fearful thing to fall into the living power, hands of the living power. But call to remembrance. He's telling you, call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Have y'all went through that? Once you illuminated, have you went through a flight of afflictions? That's why he said, look, the real Israelites gonna go through this. Uh, hold that, get Isaiah 48 and 10. Behold, Isaiah 48 and 10, he said, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. It don't sound like a lot of love. They can talk about Mosiah is all up. Mosiah said, I've chosen thee, who are the Israelites, in the furnace of affliction. Why? He said, For my own sake. Not for our sake, for my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it? For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. See? So we're going to go through afflictions. That's like, you know, you, you find a child and they born in this world and they get everything that they want. They never had to labor or not have, have to go through nothing to get whatever. They be spoiled and, and uh, call them a big grown brat. They ain't went through nothing to get struggle to get through anything. We got to go through afflictions to get to this kingdom. Great tribulations and say, look, y'all better understand, and understand. Make it mean something different. Make this mean something different. Mashiach Shai told us these days we in now, Matthew 24, 21. He said, for then, in the time we in now, shall be great tribulation. That's catching a lot of hell. 
such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time that we are now, y'all, no, nor ever shall be. That's it. But it says it's going to be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. To this time that we are now, nor ever shall be, listen what he said, and except those days that we live in now should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. That's deep, y'all. So there's a diabolical plan to kill mostly everybody on the earth. He said, if some of those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, that's the 12 tribes of Israel, those days shall be shortened. The days going to be shortened for the elect's sake. Going back to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 32, it says, But call to remembrance the former days, in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. You know, a lot of us that came into this truth, we went through a great fight of afflictions. A whole lot of catching a lot of hell. So it was proven. That's why I applaud everybody that's of old that's still involved in this truth. We might not be together, but we still involved in bringing forth the truth to our people. Then went through these afflictions. Some still going through a lot of afflictions. Some of us are still. Partly was ye were made a gazing stock. Both by reproaches, both both by disgrace of great gazing stock. I mean, they looking at you funny, talking about you, but you still endure it. Disgracing, talking about us, in afflictions, catching a lot of pain and suffering. And partly, when you became companions of them that were so used, you became companions of those that are already going through, have been through the affliction like myself. I've been through a lot of afflictions. So those brothers and sisters become a part of me and I can say this is what you got to go through because I'm showing it to you. I've been through it, still going through it. And there are many of us that are still going through these afflictions. So therefore you become companions with those that have been through the affliction so like you going through it. Don't think it's some strange thing. For ye had compassion of me and my bonds, he said, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance, plenteousness. What did he tell us? Look. Look what he told us. Go to uh, 2 Maccabees 8 chapter. I think I still have it. Yeah, yeah. Um, look at verse uh, 52 of 2nd Edition of the Apocrypha, verse 52 of the 8th chapter. For unto you is paradise open, enduring substance, right? He said, for you, unto you is paradise, that's the kingdom open. The, the tree of life is planted, the time to come is prepared. I said, I'm, I'm going to prepare a place you said the time to come is prepared already. Just waiting on us to get ourselves together. Plenteousness is made ready. What did he say? In heaven a better and an enduring substance. What did he say? Plenteousness is made ready. An enduring substance. Plenteousness is made ready. A city is built. That's New Jerusalem was already built, y'all. And the rest is alive. We know we're going to get the rest when we read Isaiah 14, 1 to 3. Yeah. Perfect goodness and wisdom. There it is, y'all. Going back to Hebrews 10. Verse 34 says, Knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance, cast not away therefore your confidence. Don't cast away your confidence, your trust, and your faith in the Most High. 
which hath great recompense of reward. But ye have need of patience. It's going to take some time, but you still got to have patience. That, after ye have done the will of the Most High, you keeping his law, statutes, and commandments, ye might receive the promise. Who's the promise given to? Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to the twelve tribes of Israel. Point blank. That's it. That's why, look. Look, go to Romans. Ninth chapter. Can't nobody, this is, and this cancels out a spiritual Israelite. Can I be a spiritual Chinese? <laughs> spiritual Japanese? I don't think so. This is what it said. Romans 9. And this is, let's start at verse 3. Who are Israelites, right? Well, no, let's go, let's go up. One, I say the truth in Mashiach. I say the truth by Hashem of Mashiach. In Mashiach, that's in the name of the Lord and Savior. That's what he's saying. Just short way to say it. I say the truth in the name of the Lord and Savior. In a Mashiach. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. That I'm that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. He's going through a lot of changes, tribulation. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Mashiach for my brethren. That's his brothers. My kinsmen, according to the flesh. This counsels out spiritual Israelites. Who are Israelites, according to the flesh. You know what your flesh is? Pinch yourself. That's your flesh. To whom pertains the adoption, us being adopted back to the Most High, through a Mashiach Elishai, dying on the tree, his blood being shed for the 12 tribes of Israel, and the glory, the glory of the kingdom that's coming to the 12 tribes of Israel, we got next forever and ever and ever. And the covenant is given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the 12 tribes of Israel. And the giving of the law, the giving of the law, we just read that in Psalms 147, 19, and 20. And the service of the Most High, the service of the priesthood, and the promises. You see? Just like you just said, and the promises. Who are the fathers? We know the fathers are who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And of cons whom as concerning the flesh, not the spirit, Mashiach Elshai came, who was over all, most high blessed forever. And I'm not dealing with that word because that's Egyptian idol that they put in there. Look it up. Okay, it said A M E N, right? Let me just it said it there. Let me ask you this question: Is that your Jesus Christ's name? Is that his name? A-M-E-N. So he's going to tell you to give him all homage whenever you pray to the Most High, right? Is that what you're saying? Go to Revelations 3, 14. Because this is all in red. This is him speaking. Mashiach Yavashai, who the world called Jesus Christ. Just, just is him speaking. So Revelation 3, 14 says, And unto the angel of the Le church of the Laodiceans, right? These things said the, just what they said at the end of the prayers. Is that Jesus Christ? Is that a Mashiach Yahweh Shai or whatever name you use pertaining to this Bible that's calling him Jesus Christ? Is that him? That's his name. So whenever you pray, he's gonna tell you to give him all homage. I know it's a song that uh they sung at um George Floyd funeral. And I like the song, but at the end they just kept saying this over and over again it was almost as long as the song and it was like giving homage to this Egyptian idol more so than the most high the song was a beautiful song but in the end they start saying that singing that that word is that a Mashiach Yavashai nobody's answering me I'm asking questions why are you not answering ask your pastor ask your preacher ask your Teacher, ask your leader. Is that his name? Is that him? A M E N. Because it says it's him speaking. All from mostly all the way from the second chapter of Revelations, all the way through the third chapter. That's him speaking. Second and third chapter is him speaking. Is that his name? So that's who you give homage to at the end of your prayer, praying to the Most High. 
He would have you do that. I don't think so. That's why I say, Bible been tampered with. You see how they stuck it in there? You don't probably even recognize that. These things said that name, A-M-E-N, that you say at the end of your prayers. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of the Most High. So that Egyptian idol that you don't know nothing about, if you're still doing it, that you ain't really, you're going to try and come up with something to say that, is that Amashiach Yahushai? Is that, if you call him Jesus Christ or whatever name you use, Yeshua, Yeshia, is that uh, Yehoshua, whatever name you use for him, is that him? That's who you give homage to at the end of your prayers. Because you see what it says, they, they snuck it in there all the time. In the name of Jesus Christ, that name. Is that his name? Because that's what you're saying, but you don't realize what you're saying because y'all just robots and robot tees and you ain't really taking the time to analyze what is it that I'm saying at the end of my prayer. In the name of Mashiach Yahushai, bam, A-M-E-N. Is that his name? That's my question because y'all saying in the name of whatever name you're saying, then y'all use that name. Say that's his name. But you ain't hearing it because you ain't took the time to take the time to say, in the name of Mashiach Yahweh Shai, bam. Is that his name? A M E N. Because it says it right there. Thus said the A M E N. You can't love him and say that's him. And when you see it, you got to stop. The faithful, the true witness. Right, so I read. Look, look what it reads. And, uh, and I got to, you know, this got to come out because most I speak one shade twice, man perceive it not. So look what it says in uh, Revelation 19 and 11, which represented my shake of shy coming back to judge and make war. It's a, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse pure righteous power and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true remember he said that name A-M-E-N is a faithful and true witness here it is this him this is this, is this who's coming back to do this this Egyptian idol faithful and true this is Mashiach Yahweh Shai which in Revelation 3.14 was named A-M-E-N and in righteousness, which is keeping under most of his laws, we know that Deuteronomy 6.25, he does judge and make war. You kind of see this, man. That's why I know they don't want this to go out there. They don't, they don't want everybody to hear this. No way. Because you're going to start realizing, oh, oh man, they, 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 they stopped calling on B-A-A-L. That's representing L O R D. Oh no. They realize that they go look at the back of a dollar bill. What do you see? Egypt? The so called white man from Egypt? No. But in, in Babylon? I mean, look what they got in Washington, D.C. They got the phallic symbol. Y'all know what that is? That represents. Uncircumcised scrotum. Right there in Washington, D.C. The things that you see coming from Egypt. Look at it back a dollar, bi dollar bill. You see it. That's why the most I call this place what? Babylon the Great. Babylon. Where's Babylon? Egypt. Call them Egypt and Babylon. You see it on the back of the dollar, dollar bill. I mean, it's right there. In your face. That's what we got to change, y'all. Look. Going back to Hebrews 10, 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come, we just read about him coming to do what? Judge and make war. My shot was shot through the power of the Most High. He that shall come will come and will not tarry. See? Now the just shall live by faith. You can believe in the Most High. My Shai said, "Have faith in the Most High." Mark eleven twenty two. 
But if any man draw back, you want to draw back? He said, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them which draw back unto perdition. We ain't those that's going to draw back unto perdition. But of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Save, saving of the spirit. We ain't going to draw back to perdition. That's why he tell you about this man of perdition. Perdition. The God of this world. The power of this world. Listen. Over, understand, overstand. Oh. Um, it's real. Look at all. Uh, First Thessalonians. Oh. Um, verse. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5 and 2. Say, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the most high wild Mashek of Shai so cometh as a thief in the night. He coming as a thief in the night. You know when a thief is coming. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As you veil upon a woman. You know a woman having contractions when she having a baby? They're going to say peace and safety. Then sudden destruction come up upon them as to develop upon a woman with child. I mean, she having a contraction. That's why you see all these things happening back to back to back to back really, really fast, y'all. And they shall not escape. You know, they're not going to escape, he said. That's why we got to understand, understand this because it's very important that we see this here. Because, uh, let me see. But ye brethren are not in darkness. You're not supposed to be in ignorance that that day should overtake you as a thief. You should be knowing these signs, these prophecies, and looking at what the Bible has said already that we're looking for that's happening. You say, oh, wow, that coincides with this verse. That coincides with this chapter of the Bible. That you shouldn't be in darkness. Darkness means ignorance and not knowing. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. It shouldn't come upon those that have been learning this truth as a thief. We are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. He talked about the world he was in and the world that we're in now. This is, uh, this, these are days of night that we're shining bright to make that night be day. That's why when you look at it's hip talk, really. Go to uh St. John, the first chapter. Give you an example of a Masha Kelly child. Um first uh, St. John, the first chapter, and look at uh start of verse four, it says, In him who was a Masha Kelly was life. We say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the way to show you how to follow the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High, which is the truth that's going to lead to everlasting life. In him, a Mashiach of Shai, was life. And the life was the light of men. And that light is the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High. It say, and the light shineth in darkness. Right? So he's in the Roman Empire. And he's dealing with Israelites that's called themselves Gentiles. And remember, it was against the law for them to call themselves Israelites. But it was going to be put to death during the Greek Empire. So we got all these people that are Israelites that call themselves Corinthians, Thessalonians, Ephesians, Philippians, and so forth, Romans, and so forth. And you see in the New Testament that Paul is writing to and going there dealing with. But the Israelites that are Gentiles, just like right now, the majority of our family members, do they call themselves Jews or they call themselves Gentiles? They call themselves Gentiles. They've been taught that they're Gentiles. Grafted in, don't know who they've been grafted in among. Speaking in tongues, and they go to church, they speak it in tongues, don't know what they're saying. Ain't no interpreter. But these are the things that have been programmed as robots and robotees to do. But not according to these scriptures. That's why it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. You see? Just people that what world, what world was he in? The Roman world. And dealing with Israelites that were lost. 
to their heritage, lost to the fact that they are the chosen people of the Most High, lost to the fact that Amashek Shai came as the Messiah already, like some of you thinking he's going to come back for the first time when he comes back to judge and make war. He's going to be burning you up to be like my my brother, my late brother, Zakitha used to say, going to make you crispy. <laughs> That's real. That's real, y'all. Look, going back to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, which is darkness, ignorance, not knowing, nor of darkness. Therefore, excuse me, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. I mean, you got to be focused, first and foremost. And don't be no drunkard. But there's many talking about focus. Let us watch and be focused on what the scriptures have said and you see happening in the world. But they got the distraction over here and something else they going. They got something else going on. A lot of you don't look at what the elite are doing. Because you're so busy looking at what we're dealing with and how you can get some have some fun over here to take your mind off of what you need to be concentrating on, and that's your salvation. Before it's too late. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. But they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that sleep, sleeping in darkness. They ignorant to what's going on in this world. And they that and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. You see? But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith in the Most High and love, which is keeping of the Most High's commandments, Second John, the seventh, the sixth verse. And for an helmet, that's where the way you think, helmet go on your head, the hope of salvation. Okay? For the Most High have not appointed us to wrath. But to obtain salvation, power, rules, and authority by our power, Mashiach Shai, who just read, is coming to judge and make war. Now, 2 Thessalonians uh, 2 and verse 3. Let, it, let no man deceive you by any means. Don't let no man lie to you by any means. For that day shall not come except. There be there there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. Who is he? Who this man of sin? The son of perdition. He got to be revealed, which is the so-called white man, which is the Edomite, who opposes. Listen, to who it is? Who tell me who this is? Who opposes and exalts himself? Above all that is called the most high. Or that is worship. So that he as the most high. As the Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Sitteth in the temple of the most high. Showing himself that he is the most high. Now. As I read. 1 Corinthians 3. He sitting in the temple of the most high. Showing himself that he is the most high. Right. First Corinthians. What's, who's the temple of the most high. First Corinthians 316. First Corinthians 3 and 16. So he's sitting in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. It's real clear. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Most High? And that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you? So who is the ye? Who is the you? You gotta go back to the first verses of Corinthians. Let's find out. Paul, 1 Corinthians 1 and 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Amashiach Yahweh Shai through the will of the Most High. And so things, our brethren, unto the church of the Most High. We read the church in Acts 7 38. It's the children of Israel that was in the wilderness. Unto the church of the Most High, which is at Corinth. To them that are sanctified by Hashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai in Mashiach Yahweh Shai called to be saints. Now we define the saints in Psalms 148, 14. 
with all that in every place call upon the name of Amashiach Yamashai, our master, both theirs and ours, you see? It's clear. So, to say grace be unto you and peace from the Most High, our Father, the Most High, the power of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. He became the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. And from our Master, my Shekel Shai, who said in Matthew 15, 24, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You're not going to get around this. Grace and mercy, grace is to who? Wisdom of Solomon. Three and nine. Who's the grace to? So they took this out of the Bible, your Bibles. A lot of you that you in these religions, you don't know anything about the Apocrypha. They took it out. But it defines who this grace and mercy is before you got to the New Testament. In Wisdom of Solomon, we know the saints are the 12 tribes of Israel, Psalms 148. And 14. So now, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9, who did grace for? We're just going to deal with the saints. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, which is the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him, for grace and mercy is to his saints. Can't get no clear than that, right? Wisdom of Solomon 4 15. The people, excuse me, this the people saw and understood it not, neither laid they up this in their minds that his grace and mercy is with his saints. You see that? His grace and mercy is with his saints. So that's who the grace and mercy is to. The 12 tribes of Israel. Only. That's why it's talking to us. The 12 tribes of Israel. Only. So now, it says... Since we the temple of the Most High, 1 Corinthians 3.16, know ye not that ye, 12 tribes of Israel, are the temple of the Most High and the spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you? It's not to anyone else. That's why when you go to, back to uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, and four, it says, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called G-O-D, or the Most High, or Mashiach Yahushai, or that is worshipped, so that he as the Most High, as a Mashiach Yahushai, sit up in the temple of the Most High, that's among us, showing himself that he is the Most High, right? Now, I got a picture back right here. He's showing himself, and this is what our people believe, that this is a Mashiach Yahweh Shai, the so-called white man. And Joseph and Mary is Edomites, so-called white people. This is what they've done. Uh, not only that, let me show you the Bible again, because a lot of times y'all Forget about things. So let me show you the Bible again. We go to Bible. Let's look in the Bible. First, it says the Holy Bible. See, it says the Holy Bible. This Bible is from 1826. Uh, yeah. It says, first published by the English College at Duany. In 1609 A.D. In 1609 A.D. It says. I missed that. First published. By the English College of. Dure. D-O-U-A-Y. In 1609 A.D. You know they say we came here. Ten years later right. But look what they have here. Look what they have here. It says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, right? So look who they have. I've got to handle it real careful because, like I said, it's that old. 
See what they have there? See what they have? They have a so-called white man. Butt naked with a towel around his genital holding on to the crescent moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See how they see how they see how they got they got him in the sky. Picture this picture worth a thousand words, right? They got him in the sky. Let me turn it this way so you can see it better. They got them in the sky, supposed to be the most high right here, so called white man. Can't kill Abel. Opposite. You see what he did? Turn Abel white. See what he did to Cain? Turn him black. 1609, y'all. 1609. First published by the English College of Duarte. 1609 AD. Mm -hmm. But this one's published in 1826. So, but first published in 1609 AD, you know. So, that's why you look at this, and the scriptures are clear. It's just, you know, we haven't really uh, taken the time to look at what it is that's being said here. That's why I say 2 Thessalonians 2 and 4, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called the most high. Or that is worship. So that he as the most high sit up in the temple of the most high, which we are the temple of the most high, the 12 tribes of Israel, as I showed you in 1 Corinthians 3 16. Showing himself that he is the most high. That's why our people say that they believe the white man is going to come back on this earth. And save them. It says. And now ye know. What withholdeth. That he might be revealed. In his time. He's been revealed. For the mystery of iniquity. Of wickedness. Does already work. What. Kingdom is he in. What is he talking about. The Romans. We're in the latter end of the Roman Greco era right now. Same people. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. That's why it tells you in 2 Ezra 6 and 9 for Esau is the end of the world. That's what he's talking about. He's going to be taken out of the way. And Jacob is the beginning of that follow it. We got next forever and ever and ever, the 12 tribes of Israel. And then shall that wicked be revealed. See that? That's our read. Job 9.24 says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He who is the wicked cover the faces of the judges thereof, if not where it is. Didn't I just show it to you? In the Bible, from 1609 A.D., first printed with them, all the pictures in it. And then shall that wicked, all praise the most high. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Most High shall consume, and the Most High shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Look. Right quick. I'm going to take a rock of science and figure this out. Revelation 19 and 15. You say, with the spirit of what? His mouth, right? Spit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Revelation 19 and 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That with it, with this sharp sword, he shall smite or kill the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty Most High. Period. So going back to. 2 Thessalonians 2. It says, verse 9, Even him 
whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness because they're not, remember Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 7? Are you just been listening to these lessons? He said, we weird ourselves in the way of wickedness when salvation come on the earth. He said, we weird ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yeah, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the most high and the most sacred of a shine, we have not known it. That's why he's saying. And with all the civilness, all lies, the, the devil what? Deceived the whole world. And he tell you that even him who's coming is after the working of Satan. Remember, I'm not shy, I'm not shy, was taken up on a pinnacle. Do I need to show you that? And my Matthew the fourth chapter or Luke the fourth chapter when the devil he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights the devil took him on a high place and showed him all the kingdoms of the world the moment of the time he said all could be thou if you do what bow down and worship me that's why it's saying even him verse 9 whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all the civilness all lies of unrighteousness, not keeping the laws of the Most High, not knowing the laws of the Most High, not teaching people how to keep the laws of the Most High, but how to be unrighteous, because he's deceiving people with all of his unrighteousness and them that perish. Now, you know, you're going to die. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Which is, we can sing it together. Psalms 119, 142. That righteousness is, ever, is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. So they receive not the love of keeping the law. Statue coming up to the most high since they teaching everybody we ain't under the law. That they might be saved. So you ain't going to be saved. And with all the deceivableness, they don't lie to everyone of unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is not keeping the law that's come out of the most high. Because righteousness, we remember we read that in Deuteronomy 6.25. When you remember these things and it comes to you as you read the Bible, say, oh, okay. That means they're not keeping the laws of the most high. They're not doing what the most high say do. And with all the civilness of unrighteousness and them that perish. So if you be unrighteous, you don't want to keep the laws of the most high, you going to perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth. They don't receive the, they don't receive not the love of the Most High's laws, statute, commandments, that they might be saved. And for this cause, since you don't want to follow the Most High's laws, and for this cause, the Most High shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. See, most I said you a strong delusion that you should be, believe a lie. Like he wanted to kill uh, King Ahab. He said he had a meeting between the angels on the right hand and the left hand. But you want to know what? I can go there. He said, I want to kill this dude. I want him to die. Ring my